Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, here we are, end of the season, uh, almost perfect offense, not quite, we made that one goof in that one match. I think that was it this season, I could be wrong, but uh, we are unfortunately just outside of top 1k, it is super competitive to make top 1k. Um, for reference, tier 39, which will... I believe starts showing up next season. The cutoff is 21k, <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea of just how much you need to make top 1k, but yeah. I suspect it's probably around 21,150 or something. Not too far off from where we were. Uh, as you can see, we definitely lost quite a bit of lift on defense to start, but uh, we'll go ahead into our first replay now. And well, to kick things off, we have this team here. Haven't seen this in a while. I remember when a uh, duo or Har Har harmonized Tiki with bonus. She was literally everywhere with dual Lin because, of course, her harmonized skill uh, triggers on Lin. So obviously, that's pretty useful. And if you stack it with dancers and stuff, you can just wipe entire teams in one turn. Of course, nowadays it's not as trivial because save skills are a thing, but even so, there are ways around it. Uh, just putting a save skill on a unit with high defense, or high bulk in general on defense is not necessarily sufficient to kill. But here they do barely pick up the two shot on Selif, and that allows them to do the sh usual shenanigans here. Spooky ghost. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and they use their duo skill here. So they can just take out legendary Julia here and Bramon stuck in the corner. One of the many things that are that's wrong with this defense, but I mean it's all a meme at the end of the day, and uh I'ma be real, this was a strange week on defense. So we'll move on to the next one. Like, honestly, I don't know if folks, like, overestimate how easy the match is, or the defense is actually okay enough. It, uh, it's not, actually. <laughs> but, uh, quite a few blade sessions here. I've been see- I, I saw a couple blade sessions this season. Kind of interesting to see. Have not seen that in a long time, and well, if you haven't figured out what's going on already, the star of the show is actually, a. Uh, <laughs> kind of, who would have thought? Uh, but he is quite useful for Ether Raids if you have the right team, right setup. Um, <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty funny. Um, yeah. See, the thing is, there's this thing about to non magic foes, so it doesn't go on Bramon, Legendary, and Julia and stuff. But most of the time in Aether Raids, a lot of ranged units aren't running close counter. So with this, there's no issues with counter attacks from Selif, which as you can see for air would be quite a huge problem. But because of the usual air shenanigans here, they're able to go coast in with all their units and get a lot of mileage here. So they just clear the entire team in one turn, just solid execution. Not nothing really close in terms of damage except Selif sort of. I, I don't know if they calced it out. I think it was close. But yeah. <laughs> Have not seen this in a while. It, it's a bit unfortunate it only works on non-magic foes, but well, you, you take what you can get. <laughs> and alright, we have this team. Kind of interested into why they put catapult in column two. I'm trying to think what what layouts. I guess healing tower and stuff sometimes put on column two. Uh, Panic Manor ta tactics room. I'm trying to think. It's a pretty stacked team, so we'll see what they do here. Of course, this week's meme is the same as what was it? The meme two weeks ago. Glacies Julia. <laughs> uh, meme of the century, Kappa. Uh, it's just good when it works, and when it doesn't work, it, it doesn't work. 
That's pretty much the nature of it. So here they decide to take out Bramamond. And they decide to do this. Now I don't know about you, but remember this Brave Hector is a near save Brave Hector and he does not have Austin counter or distant counter or anything. And we have over here a uh, Glacies Legendary Julia uh, that has a uh, 60 res on initiation. <laughs> so I'm not sure what they were thinking here, but uh, we just get the straight up Ultra Nuke on Brave Hector. And of course everything's going to derp out here because unfortunately even the Legendary Julia doesn't take out Claude. Cell of Can. And Julia manages to barely get in the Wings of Mercy range, so Bramon can go teleport in and meme. He's actually kind of close. Just 5 HP short from not making it, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the plan was there. Obviously, Leg er, Brave Claude could not one-shot Legendary Julia, and I'm guessing she had a pretty nasty counter in his face. So they didn't go for that, but yeah, a bit bit awkward. But now we'll move on to the next one. I don't know why I'm saying this for everyone. <laughs> but of course, because we're rush climbing, the only thing we're ever going to see is lots of plus 10 units. Not not all the units are plus 10, but you know, there, there's, there's a few. <laughs> uh, not entirely sure why they're using Freya on offense. I guess the, for the Wings of Mercy and she is decently fast, but of course with attack speed solo, kinda doesn't make sense. But here they go to break the catapult, which is definitely something you can do against this layout, uh, all by design. Not every offense team can snipe it down turn one and get out of range, but if you have the right units, it works out. Now here we go in, air goes in for the attack, and we get this. Now you might be wondering, why did they do that? <laughs> uh, well, the first problem of course is Selif being able to counter air. Let's just assume she was running like Hardy Bearing or whatever, or he couldn't counter attack. The problem is air is bonus. <laughs> So unfortunate, but this is, I'm pretty sure it's a maxed out air. Pretty much maxed out air. And uh, because she's bonus, Lift Your Berg and Fury 4 only do 12 chip damage. So after she attacks twice, she's only at 27 out of 51, which means she's 2 HP short of Wings of Mercy range. So they actually can't go in unless air can take a counter. And Selif does have a pretty hefty attack stats, which is a problem. So, uh, I don't actually know if Selif was one-shotting. He might have. That's probably why they didn't go for it. But because of that, our units get to fly in and do things. And now Selif's in vantage range with Ignis, which is just a massive problem. No one's surviving that. And so they just end up surrendering here. But yeah, I don't I don't think it needed to end this way. Uh, there's definitely some they didn't have to go up this side at all. Going up this way was totally viable, I think. Especially with the bolt tower damage. But of course you have to be a bit careful with setup because you only get two turns before the bolt tower goes off. But I think I like this new format. It at least makes the replays like 1% more interesting to watch. <laughs> because you don't immediately know what the outcome of the match is. And, you know, it, it's, it's the usual just plus 10s left and right. But it's not all plus 10s. Not whale enough out of 10, Kappa. <laughs> so here they decide to uh, just get set up. A lot of people seem to like going on the left side. Probably just because it's the most accessible location because Selif is not a ranged unit and they got time to set up so they can do basically whatever they want. I do think Sylvia's sudden panic was pretty useful. Uh, so here you might be like what happened? 
They just hit end turn after taking out Celeth. My guess is they were playing too fast, and instead of hitting the duo skill button, they hit the end turn button. I don't, I don't remember how close they are. They might be right next to each other. And unfortunately, there's the confirmed dialogue things like exactly the same location and stuff for end turn. So I think they just accidentally hit end turn because obviously, you're, uh, I don't, I don't think they were just going to hit end turn like this. So a bit unfortunate, but uh, Bramon actually barely picks up the one shot there, which is kind of sad. Then again, it is the uh, unmerged Bramamon, so I mean, what do you expect? So I'm running death blow, because I'm like, we, we actually need some attack <laughs> on him. And so at this point, yeah, there's not really much to do here. Uh, you, you could probably still win this, maybe, but I kind of doubt it because two Giga Nukes are still around and even with 40% damage reduction, Julia just hits like a truck. It's so funny when she manages to get stuff done. Of course, there's Binding Necklace, so not as much attack and res, but still quite a bit for Glacies. And well, again, it's another one of these things where the execution wasn't quite there, and, uh, rip. And hadn't seen this in a while, but, uh, Winter Altina here. Kind of overkill, in my opinion, running a Duel Makaya and Brave Lucina. I feel like, for general purposes, if you're gonna use Winter Altina, Brave Lucina is generally better. If you just stack enough attack and just general stats on Winter Altina, she pretty much just two shots stuff as is. Dominance is a bit weird in that some units, for example, neutralize penalties, or there's harsh command or odd recovery or whatever, or Kia staff, I guess, for the people that use Sarah. But uh, I'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer to verify that uh, you, they don't actually need to use the duo skill here, but why not? <laughs> Well, why not? Um, and yeah, because the thing, the main thing that Brave Lucina enables for the most part is allow Winter Altina to proc twin blades as long as she attacks twice. And here, Bramon actually does almost kill, but not really, because he's running Luna and uh, the scaling's a bit jank. There is attack res unity and of course the Dark Shrine to give Altina quite a bit of res, but it's just like, yeah, not quite enough. Yeah, not really much I can do there. Even if I had low attack res, I believe that still doesn't one shot, so not quite there. Team still does not have as much damage output as I'd like, but relatively straightforward clear here with some variation advantage. Um, is it necessary to use Winter Altina if you're using a Vanish Rat? No, but it's convenient for people because you can, especially with Brave Lucina, and they're just stacking attack, nine attack there. And they could have even had more attack with Peony if she was in the same line. So just a lot of attack stacking will get the job done because other than like, I guess Celeph, no one really has a defense stat. <laughs> but let's move on. And well, I think the number one thing that's been happening this season, as you can see how many people are using Bolt Tower in column 3 and 4, it's just the standard. And one of the issues with Dark Defenses is dealing with Bolt Tower, because uh, for the people who have been around for a while, uh, watching my shenanigans in light season offense with Nino and company, you would know that a lot of matches are only winnable with Nino <laughs> because Bolt Tower level 7. It's just insane how much chip damage you can get for free if it goes off. But here they decide to go ahead and take out Legendary Julia because obviously Glacies is going to hurt. But there's a problem. And, um, well, the first problem is legendary or er, brave Claude is debuffed by a crud ton but the other problem 
Uh, his weapon, the main part of his weapon is not active because he's not initiating and no one's within two spaces. So, and keep in mind this is the plus zero Bramamond. Braveclad isn't even able to one shot with Deadeye, and that just spells bad news bears. Self can just go ahead and do his thing, and uh, you can go on to win here, I'm pretty sure, but it's just not gonna be pleasant. Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't actually know if it's win, it's probably winnable, I would imagine. Might have to be a no, I, I don't think so. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer. How's that? But I mean, this season is just, yep, it's what happens when you rush climb. Plus 10, plus 10, <laughs> not plus 10, plus 10, and uh, well, what did you expect? Plus 10. <laughs> of course, practically speaking, if if I were to be actually trying on Etherid's defense, I wouldn't, for one, I would not be rush climbing in Etherid because that's, that's how you get matched up against a bunch of people who generally rank well. They have competent offense teams and they, they know how to play Aether Raids to a pretty decent degree. So if you're, if you're trying to, unless you're trying to go around about your way, um, trying to take out all the top tier players of your defense, then, you know, you can rush climb like I do to have a decent chance of getting matched up with some of them. Of course, the ultra, ultra tryhards don't rush climb. Um, because it minimizes the chance their defense gets matched up against another competent player. <laughs> so, uh, there's a, there's a jank juggle with that, but uh, here it's just a combination of dual Alphonse tanking and dual Lin picking off some of the relevant threats. And yeah, pretty straightforward. Kind of an interesting set for dual Alphonse, but I mean, it makes sense. You're just balancing out your bulk with attack res solo and sturdy stance. Attack res solo is a bit weird, but I mean, what else are you going to put there if you don't want close counter? So, let's move on to our final replay of the week. And here we have good old Brave Hector and company. I'm interesting to see Dragon Wall and Mill. It makes sense, but uh... It's probably because my offense team is so wheelchair, but Sabotage Attack on Mila has been incredibly useful in offense. And of course, what do you expect? More plus 10 spam because we're up here. <laughs> uh, what, what's new in the house? And well, the one th like if there's anything this defense does, it can at least do some damage. <laughs> If if you let if you let my units get their specials off, they can do some damage. And so that's exactly why here. You see they take some time to set up. I don't know why they don't bother breaking the infantry school. I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh Here they go in for the attack and air actually lives by one. Totally not rigged in any way. <laughs> uh good old Bramamond. This is why attack plus three seals better, Kappa. Uh, but 100% not rigged there. Of course, like, it is ultra rigged because of Bramamon impenetrable dark means Caduceus staff and distant guard aren't active, so it's literally just the numbers working out in their favor. And they said they decided to do this. Now, of course, the reason of going in like that is to get the pulse smoke off. So Legendary Julia does not have Glacies because uh, it turns out I'll leave it as an exercise for the reader who, reader, what, viewer, <laughs> viewer who's interested. If they just decided to hit end turn with Brave Hector in range of this Bramlon and Legendary Julia, he actually would have died. <laughs> even though there's Flame because, uh, uh, because science. And even though there's Chill Res on Legendary Julia reducing her Glacies damage, Brave Hector straight up just dies in two shots. One 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 shot from Legendary Julia and Bramond. So uh unless I did my Kelks wrong, of course, but uh <laughs> they actually uh 
you know, here Brave Hector picks, easily picks up the one shot on Legendary Julia. The problem is, he doesn't have a near save unit, so Sola literally just gets to pick off Flane and his GG. <laughs> uh, of course, they can win at this point, but they probably want to not drop a unit here because this team is more than capable of sweeping enemy defenses. But uh, theoretically, all they would have to do is get this air to attack that Bramamond, but they would have to have their Brave Hector reposition. So when Selif moves, and they also would not have to have a unit here or here, so when Selif moves and he gets dance, his only option is to attack Brave Hector. And if all your units are within two spaces of here, Far Save is going to take care of those units. And obviously no one else is really going to kill Brave Hector in one shot. So yeah, not the greatest execution, but it's a bit difficult approaching from this side of the map. I, I feel like they might as well have just approached from the left side. And it would have been fine, maybe. Because, you know, they have Flane, so if Hec as long as Hector lives, he can just get healed off by Flane, I guess. And he would be fine to some degree, or not. I don't know, there's a lot of things to think about here. But uh, yeah, with that, that is all our replays for this week. So we ended up losing 208 lift on defense. <laughs> uh... But when we're scoring so much, well, it's not so much, but it's it's quite a bit. Plus 198 on offense. Right, plus 208, sorry. I don't know why I keep thinking it's plus 198. It's in, we're in Vaults of Heaven, so there's the extra 10 lift if you don't drop any units. Yeah, plus 208 lift on offense. Uh, allows you to take that much lift loss and still make tier 39 if it existed already. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but the rewards difference is honestly kind of negligible. It's over time it adds up, but it's just like, for my purposes, since I'm goofballing around, it doesn't really matter. But uh, with that, that concludes our jank season of shenanigans. Honestly, this week's defense was mostly just people sabotaging themselves. Uh, kind of like with our anima defense last week like that what was it there was like that dual save team that left Regan outside of range of near save so Duma just walked in and picked up the two shot or whatever so yeah not not the greatest stuff there but here we're staying in tier 21 I just made an ultra budget soap build I was already planning to make him plus 10, but it was finally time because he's bonus as well, so might as well. Unfortunately, that means we're further away from uh, maxing out our feathers. Feels bad. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess we can uh, continue the waiting game, and we got our usual few defenses. Defense wins. On, in arena arena defense wins i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> and uh, arena assault this week was pretty intense there were some there were some difficult cheesy matches uh some actual cheese <laughs> in some matchups but at the end of the day uh, we're just gunning for top 1k because as we can see in the top standings uh, well now that 766 is our thing people can get I believe 5,376 was the old maximum possible score. Now, technically speaking, if you do manage to get all 766 matches, which I don't really think is possible without incredible RNG because it requires 2 plus 10 legendary clods and 2 plus 10 190 BST duo units. Maxed everyone maxed out on score. Not very many people are going to have that stuff out, so... <laughs> Uh, it's kind of expected, but yeah, you can see the cutoffs. They used to be like 5,350 or 54 or whatever to make top 50. Now it's around 5,360 or mid like 5,350s. So yeah, it's just a lot of fishing that I don't bother doing now. It's just, let's just get it done and 
get arena assault done for the week and call it a day. But yeah, with that, uh, nothing much going on. There's a Mjolnir strike coming up again. Um, Astra Major. We'll see if we stay in this week. It's a bit suspicious because Astra Major is the one season, major season, where the cutoffs fluctuate by like four to six points, depending on how people go in and out of tier 20 and 21. It's very weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll be back when the results drop in. All right, pretty sure the reward should be out. By now, I'm pretty sure, yet yeah, we're out of just outside top 1k. Feels bad, but at the end of the day, there's no functional difference in rewards between top 1k and top 5, 3k. Is there a functional difference in rewards? I forget. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty decent week. We're gonna goofball again. The <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna goofball again. Not with this layout, we're gonna do a slightly different layout, but it's basically gonna be the same meme. Uh, it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> and somehow people are going to manage to lose against it. I don't expect to make tier 38 this week. Uh, I gotta figure out what to kick out for armor school. I guess we kick out Bright Shrine. Technically none of our units are ever actually bulky, so we just need to be able to do more damage. But, uh, let's save that for another time. Resonant Bells, we're just derping around. And we should be able to stay in tier 21 again uh, next week for Arena, because we have Soph. And, uh, yeah, Arena Assaults. Not just top 1k like usual, but, uh, it's getting a bit dicey nowadays. But at the end of the day, if we have to actually score more, we pretty much just have to fish. Because we already have the scoring capabilities. So, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, And hope, hope to see you all next time. Bye!